and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Vector Matiz 3-9x40. In this review, we're going to be reviewing the Vector Matiz 3-9x40. Now, if you haven't seen my previous videos on Vector Optics, I've done many of them. And so far, they've all done really, really well. And I'm hoping it's going to be just the same with this model as well. Now, the Vector Matiz, well, this one specifically it retails uh, about $120 US. Uh, I found on their website on sale for about $100. So, usually with about $100, you're not going to get that great of a an optic. It's not going to be that great of glass. The turrets are going to be rather disappointing. It's usually considered to be pretty cheap. This one, I mean, uh, well, you guys are going to see for yourselves. It's actually going to be fairly surprising. Anyway, the Vector Matiz line, they have a wide variety of magnification ranging, uh, ranging anywhere from between uh, 2 to 7 and uh, 6 to 18 by 44. Now this is the uh, 3 to 9 by 40, a more standard format, more of your typical uh, hunting format for, you know, deer hunting or whatever. It's, it's pretty versatile. Let's start this review off with the glass quality, likely the second most important part of any optic. This is at 3 magnification. And this is at 9 magnification. Alright, so I gotta say the glass quality for a hundred dollar scope, this is damn good. We're certainly gonna give it a 5 out of 5. This is, was very impressive. Uh, I don't think you will find likely anything clear for the price. For one hundred dollars US, this is pretty damn good. Next we have the eye relief. Now at the lowest magnification you have 4.1 inches and at the highest you have 3.8. I mean that's really nice. If you're shooting your magnum calibers or whatever the case is, uh, you're definitely not going to get any scope bite with this regardless that it doesn't have any rubber grommet around the end. And the difference between the highest magnification and the lowest magnification isn't very great either. Uh, 3.8 to 4.1, that means you're not going to have any difference in your cheek weld or when your cheek is on the rifle. So that's really, really a good thing. Uh, next is also the fast focus eyepiece. Typically, I mean, again, at this price range, um, they're, they're usually pretty sloppy. And this is uh, super smooth. There is there is no slop. I mean, I can try to, no, there's no slop whatsoever. I mean, this is really, really nice. Additionally, what you want to look for is how forgiving the eye box is, meaning if you have to get perfectly centered or if you can be a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right without getting that black ring around in the optic. So this one is actually pretty darn good, even if I were to compare it with like a three or four hundred dollar uh, three to nine by 40. So this is actually very comparable, at least for that anyway, to that price range in optic. So it's very forgiving. So for the eye relief, we are definitely going to give it a five out of five. Next, we have the Focus Parallax. So this is parallax free, which typically means it's set to one distance. In this case, it's 100 yards. For a three to nine by 40, you won't notice any parallax difference, hence why there's no adjustability either on the ocular or on the side here. You strictly have your elevation and your windage turrets. So we're gonna give that a five out of five. For its purpose, you don't really want or need any parallax adjustments. This is a simple hunting scope where you want simplicity. Next, we have accuracy. Well, let's head out to the range, let's have a little bit of fun, and do some target shooting. All right, so we got our zeroed on my 223. Let's do some groups. Additionally, I do have to note the eye box is actually really nice and forgiving. So you can, it's really easy to get a really clear, really sharp, uh, crisp sight picture. And right now it's pretty dark. I mean, the 308 shooting is going to be in a different environment, but right now it's, it's overcast and the picture at, three ma at nine magnification is really bright. And for those who are wondering what chassis this is, this is the Oryx chassis by, uh, made by MDT. It's actually a pretty good group. All right, we got the Matiz on the 308. Let's see how good she does at 100 meters.
So for accuracy, we did fairly well. This probably wasn't my best day, but I did fairly well regardless. So five out of five. And additionally for recoil, it survived fine on the 308, so five out of five. Uh, now, mind you, I mean, a 308 is considered my mild recoil. It's not like a 50 BMG or a 338 Lapua or a 338 Lapua Magnum. That's just what I have to test the optics. I probably would have no budget left if I went with 338 Lapua or a 50 cal. Next, we have the turrets, which is actually the most important part of any rifle scope. Because without turrets, well, technically you have a telescope. Have a listen to these. Now they are very audible. They're very positive. There's a little bit of wiggle, uh, but very, very little in the turret itself, which I mean, for a hundred dollar scope, I mean, this is already surpassing our expectations thus far. And with the uh, windage, now, typically at this price range, what you want to look for is, is consistency in the clicks. A lot of the time you're going to notice is it could get really, really stiff in one part and then get really smooth in another. With this one, that was not the case at all. It was very consistent in the tension of the clicks throughout the adjustment range. Additionally, this optic has 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. That means you can have it on your 20 MOA rail, your zero MOA rail. Not particularly recommended for a 30 MOA rail. Although if you have a 30 MOA rail on your rifle, likely it's a purpose-built long range rifle anyway. So uh, keep in mind, you won't have any trouble uh, mounting this on your rifle, pretty much regardless of what rail system you have going on. So let's go outside, let's validate the amount of internal adjustment. Let's see if there's any point of impact change with magnification and let's do a box test. Let's start with the box test. Let's go 10 MOA up. Forty. 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 All right. Let's see if there's any point of impact change with magnification. It's really smooth, there, there's no slop whatsoever in the magnification adjustment. All right, let's see how much internal adjustment it has. And that's it, now obviously you can tell there's some dead clicks right here, so if you're compensating for, uh, for some bullet drop, well, <laughs> at some point it's not gonna help you. Now it's not quite back at zero because I didn't zero the turrets. I just counted the amount of uh, clicks for 10 MOA because I didn't have the Allen screw uh, for the right size. Let's see how much windage adjustment it has. That's it, and there are some more dead clicks here. So for the box test, there was no issues there. There's no point of impact change with magnification. Uh, it has 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. That's all nice and great. Uh, the way to re-zero these turrets, yes, they are re-zero, which is a nice feature. Uh, they have these little Allen set screws in the sides of the turrets, which isn't typical of something um, of an optic of this price. And not that it's, a, it's an issue, it's just that you're gonna have to find a very fine uh, Allen key in order to fit in there. I just counted the, the 40 MOAs when I was doing the box test, so I didn't actually re-zero the turrets when I did that. I just counted the amount of clicks to make sure it was perfect every time. For the turrets, we are definitely gonna give it a five out of five. So at $100, this is very impressive. Oh, and additionally, uh, the magnification adjustment is quite smooth. You can feel a little bit of friction, but it's really nothing that's abnormal and definitely not at this price range. 
Next we have the reticle. So for the three to nine by 40, specifically the three to nine by 40, the only option you get is a simple duplex type reticle, which is just a standard crosshair. Uh, personally, I prefer a little bit more options when it comes to uh, reticles. I mean, this one, I mean, if you're just a deer hunter and you just hunted one distance, that's great and fine. However, I, I usually prefer a BDC in my reticle just so I have that option if it's necessary. Uh, this one does not have that. However, the other um, optics in the vector uh, matches lineup do. So if you're looking at the 618 by 44, you will get that BDC option in the reticle. But for the matches, 3 to 9 by 40, uh, what you see is what you get. So since we are reviewing this model and this model only, we're going to give it a 3 out of 5. And as for reticle thickness, I'd say it's pretty much perfect. I mean, if this is going to be a hunting scope, remember, this isn't a target scope. You could still use it as that, but for size-wise, you're really going to like this for hunting. And now for the warranty. So Vector offers a limited five-year warranty, which is which isn't bad. Now remember, they are a Chinese company. Typically, what that means would be that you'd have to ship it all the way back to China, which is a major inconvenience. However, Vector have a US base address, so you could just ship it back there. Uh, and it's, it's essentially much easier to deal with than to deal with a lot of other Chinese companies. For a five year warranty, we are gonna give it a three out of five. So what are my thoughts on this rifle scope? Well, I think it's a darn good quality. It has pretty much all the features you want. Long eye relief, forgiving eye box, a decent amount of internal adjustment, and really clear glass. Those are pretty much the key things you want in any rifle scope, and this one definitely has it. And if you're interested in seeing other 3 to 9 by 40s well, check out the uh, playlist here. So if you guys enjoyed this review, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next review.